It is God who bridles my tongue when I need it. It is indeed in God in whom I live and move and have my being. I'm grateful today for this worship service. What a wonderful service from the beginning to the end. Thank you, Sister Telly, for those wonderful praise and worship songs at the beginning that really just touched my heart and got us all ready for this worship experience. Thank you for the affirmation and the welcome, D.C. Lynn. Thank you for the prayer this morning. Thank you, Minister Janet, for being our worship leader. My goodness, I'm just grateful for each and every one of you. I'm also grateful for Sister Lou, your birthday is, is here and you always serve with such love and such humility and such grace. So I'm grateful and I just want to say thank you for all that you do. And of course, I also want to say thank you to Sister Telly whose birthday is coming up this week as well. And thank you for your dedication for the way in which you humbly serve. You don't want to be recognized. You just want to do the work. And I thank you for doing the work. And it is for that, that you are indeed recognized. You're very special to us. And I thank you. Today, I want to spend time with Ephesians, the sixth chapter. I'm gonna go back to what was read in our, from our lectionary six, 10 through 20. And I am going to start with the King James Version. And I'm going to spend some time in the inclusive Bible as well. And I'm reading the King James Version because that's the version on which many of us were raised. This is a scripture that's familiar to us. We may have learned it. We may have recited it. We may have been called upon to, to speak about it in public over the course of our experiences. So I'm going to start with the King James Version, and then I'm going to move to the inclusive version. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of God's might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye be able to, shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, the utterance, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Creator God, we just love you and we just praise you and magnify you. For you, O oh God, are good and you're great. You're worthy of all of our praise. We thank you for this worship experience today, Lord God, for your sweet, sweet spirit. 
that is in the room, that is in all of our rooms, in all of our homes. We thank you for your word that will reach people even further than we imagine. We thank you, Lord God, for the ability to sustain our virtual services so that we can log in and fellowship together and worship together and, and get a word together and study together, even though we can't be in the same physical space. Thank you for the miracle of the technology that allows us to do that. Bless, oh Lord, as we prepare ourselves to hear a word from you. Lord God, I am your servant. I am a vessel, Lord God, dedicated to you. Speak to me and through me and speak to your people. Touch each person in a way that speaks to them, heals them restores them, renews them, gives them exactly what they need for what they are facing right now, Lord God. We know your word won't come back to you void, but it will reach each person the way that they need it. And for that, we say thank you. We bless you and we glorify you. In the name of love and Christ and all of your wonderful names, we pray. Amen. So let's go to the inclusive Bible. The same scripture, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Finally, draw strength from Christ and from the strength of that mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand firm against the tactics of the devil. Our battle ultimately is not against human forces, but against the sovereignty and powers, the rulers of the world of darkness and the evil spirits of heavenly realms. You must put on the armor of God if you are to resist on the evil day and having done everything you can to hold your ground. Stand fast then with the truth as the belt around your waist, justice as your breastplate, and zeal to spread the good news of peace as your foot gear. In all circumstances, hold faith up before you as your shield. It will help you extinguish the fiery darts of the evil one. Put on the helmet of salvation and carry the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So I just had a little problem and I still believe that it is all in the will of God. That is, I just spilled my water on my Chromebook that has my sermon and my Chromebook just turned off. So I'm gonna speak to you without my script about the scripture. So when I was in college and I lived in a building that was relatively new for the 70s. And my dorm room then had some amenities that other dorm rooms didn't have. One of it was a very great and ample closet. And every morning before I got ready for school, I would pray and read scriptures. And then when I got to get, when it was time to get dressed, I would go to that closet opened the door where I had this scripture laid out. That as I was preparing myself physically to go out into the world, I was also preparing myself spiritually to go out into the world. Now that was a time when I was not as enlightened as I am now. I understood that this battle was not against other humans, against individuals. And I really did believe that it was against principalities, but I didn't know then what principalities Paul was talking about. So of course, I had the interpretation, the literalist interpretation that I was fighting a spiritual battle every day. So I would read the scripture as I put on my clothes. So I would say a helmet of salvation and I would remember to put on my helmet of salvation for that day. 
I would say a breastplate of righteousness. So as I buttoned my shirt or as I put on whatever I was going to put on, I didn't wear suits every day back then. But as I put on my, my blouse or my shirt, then I would remember to put on my breastplate of righteousness and my shoes, my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. When I pulled out my shoes, I said, this is going to help me be prepared to share the gospel of peace. And I did that for a lot of years. Why am I telling you this story today? Because in those days, I had to learn how to be active in my work of growing as a Christian. That I started out praying and fasting and consecrating myself to God. But guess what happened? I started feeling like I wasn't really growing in the way that I thought I should be growing by just praying and fasting and going to church every Tuesday and Friday and Sunday. And what God showed me as I prayed about how I could grow was that this is an active walk. We're talking about a higher level of action today. That this scripture is filled with action words, with action verbs. Take, do, put on, be, are all action words. So today, I'm going to talk to you about a higher level of action, even as you prepare yourself to share the gospel of peace even as you put on the whole armor of God, even as you begin to walk a little higher, a little stronger, do a little better in this work that you're doing for Christ. But I also want to address some literalist interpretations of the scripture. You know, the scripture does say that you will, be, you will have to put on the whole armor of God, the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand against the devil. Well, I'm convinced now that I read it with a more liberative view that Paul, who was in prison, was talking about those who are creating systems of oppression that were considered evil. Those who were creating institutions that would imprison innocent people because of who they are. And in Paul's case, because of what they believe. I believe that this evil system that he's talking about, these principalities were to be seen as those principles that guide us toward injustice. I also looked up the definition of principalities for persons in Paul's time. And it was really about those rulers, those leaders. Principalities were actually sovereign kingdoms that were led by princes, people who, the prince, people who were princes, rather like kingdoms led by kings, principalities led by princes. I also saw in here, Paul preparing people to protect themselves from the same systems that had him in prison. Those were the principalities that he was teaching them to prepare themselves for and to protect themselves against. That they may not be able to help when someone came after them, but they can be prepared so that they can share the good news of the gospel of peace even in these situations. So what are some of the principalities that we are fighting against today? Oh, there are many, and you can include them in the chat, but I imagine that the principalities of today, for us, it include those principalities that have our more black men in prison than white men in prison. I believe that they are the principalities that continue to support the oppression of the homeless or of those who are impoverished or those who are vulnerable. I believe that the principalities include the perpetuation of homophobia and transphobia. I believe the principalities are, include those who are perpetuating xenophobia 
and continue to, to fight against immigrants and immigration. Some of you are putting into the, um, into the chat toxic, toxic, oppressive masculinity, white supremacy, racism, sexism, homophobia, classism, ableism. Those are principalities that we are fighting against today. Those are principalities that are inclined to, to continue to make us feel as though we are less than, that we are not good just based on who we are. Included in the, in the principalities, um, thank you, Trustee Danessa, disparity in pay based on gender. Included in these principalities, would be a system of sexism that would allow a person accused of sexual violence or sexual abuse to get away with it while the women are accused or the men who are accusing them are accused of perpetuating their own, their own victimization. I also see hate included in these principalities. You see, Paul is saying, you're not fighting against individuals. You know, sometimes you think you are, right? Sometimes you think you're fighting against that person who has said something negative about you, that person who has said something about who you are as a Black person, as a queer person, as a woman, as a man, gay man, as, as an older person, as a young person. Sometimes we think we're fighting against that individual, but we are not. We're fighting against a system that allows them the comfort to behave in the way that they behave. We're fighting against the system that allows them to feel like it's okay to be homophobic because everybody agrees with homophobia. Those are principalities that, that we are fighting against today. But are we expected then to just accept them? Are we expected to just pray it away? Are we expected to just continue to let it happen to say, God, just protect me. God, just guard me. God, just keep me. Not according to Paul. Not according to the scripture. Paul uses language that tells us how to prepare and how to fight. So let's look at that closely. I'm so sorry that I've lost my script, but let's look at that closely. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in God's mighty power, or draw your strength from Christ and from the strengths of that mighty power. Isn't that much more active than just be strong in the Lord? Like draw your strength from the power of Christ. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand firm against these tactics. <laughs> so that you can stand firm against the tactics of homophobia. So that you can stand firm against the tactics of sexism. So that you can stand firm against the tactics of ageism. So that you can stand firm of the tactics that come against us every day. Our battle, it says, is ultimately not against human forces, but against sovereignties and power, against systems of oppression, against those who continue to perpetuate laws and rules that oppress people. The rulers of the world of darkness and the evil spirits of heavenly realms. And you're asking, well, Pastor, what do we do with that? These are also principalities and systems that continue to oppress people for what they believe, for who they are, for how they love, for how they learn to, to love themselves and others. Paul was talking to a group of people who were likely to be oppressed because of what they believed, because they dared believe in this new way that wasn't yet accepted by Roman imperialism. So the funny thing about Roman imperialism is that when they shifted and started accepting Christians, then they made it a rule that everybody had to be Christian and started oppressing other people who were not Christian, right? And Paul is talking about this kind of thinking, this kind of ideology that is much greater than an individual person's belief, but that which, which impacts an individual's belief. And it says you must put on the whole, put on the armor of God if you are to resist in the evil day and having every done everything you can to still be able to hold your ground. 
to not give up. That you have to continue to do the work and not give up. And you can do that if you put on the armor of God. So I find the then imagery of the armor of God very interesting, right? I never served in the military. I am not familiar with all of the attire, all of the armor that persons in the military were using and obviously never was taught. Because when you look at this armor that he talks about, it's not complete. Right? <laughs> he just has a few items that, that are necessary, but it's not the full armor. So he's not telling you exhaustively everything that you must put on, but he's telling you some examples of what seems to be very important in this armor of God. So as you put on the armor of God, include these things in your armor. The truth as the belt around your waist. First of all, know your truth and then walk in it. Know your truth and then walk in it. You know, I'm learning that what's my truth is not necessarily your truth. What is your truth is not necessarily the next person's truth. So I want you to be active in pursuing your truth. Learn what is your truth. What heals you? What strengthens you? What inspires you? What renews you? What restores you? Know your truth. And then walk in that truth. And it says, use justice as your breastplate. Justice. Now, we see in the King James Version, the word righteousness. And righteousness in every place that is indicated in the scripture is also translated as justice. I encourage you to start thinking about justice then as the righteousness that you're pursuing. If we're fighting against these principalities that primarily focus on injustice, then our responsibility is to promote justice, to promote this righteousness and wear that as your breastplate. Not only will it protect you, but it is what people see when they see you. When they, when they encounter you, they know that you have on this breastplate of justice. It serves to protect you. And it also serves to show what represents you. And then zeal to spread the good news of peace as your foot gear. See, this speaks to me because when you go out and you're fighting this battle against systems of oppression, against principalities and darkness. Make sure that your feet are shod and prepared to share the gospel of peace, not the gospel of war, not the gospel of strife, but the gospel of peace. You know, it strikes me all the time when I think about Jesus saying, and he's quoted in John, that if anyone hears my word and does not believe them, then I don't condemn them because I came to save the world, not to condemn the world. Our job, our role as Christians, as persons who are upholding the gospel of peace is to bring peace into the world. Not to, not to disturb peace, but to bring peace. Now that peace comes with of course, justice, making this world a safe place for everyone, making this world a place where everyone, regardless of who they are, can find love, can find peace, can find joys, can find acceptance, can find affirmation. But your word should be words that bring peace. Your word should bring, be words that bring love. And then it says, in all circumstances, Hold faith up before you as your shield. Your shield is a shield of faith. 
And the scripture says that they will quench the fiery darts of the wicked. What is your faith then? Your faith is not only your faith in God, that God will love you and protect you and, and keep you and keep promises to you, but your faith is that God wants this love for everybody. Your faith is that God wants this justice for everyone. Your faith is that God will open those doors that you're knocking on to be open, not just for, for you, but for everyone. That is your shield of faith. And that will help you extinguish those fiery darts of those systems of oppression, those fiery darts of homophobia, those fiery darts of sexism, those fiery darts of ageism, those fiery darts of ableism, those fiery darts of white supremacy, those fiery darts that come out every day against us. Paul has given us tools to go through what we go through on a daily basis. You know, we meet on Sunday and celebrate together. But Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, we have to face a world that is not always inclusive. We have to face a world that is not always encouraging. We have to face a world that is not always affirming. And Paul is giving us some tools so that we can face that world, so that we can stand no matter what comes against us, that we can speak out against those things that oppress us, that we are able to put on the helmet of salvation that will protect us and carry the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So you ask, if, if we're not fighting physically, why do we need a sword? Because that sword needs to cut through oppression. That sword needs to cut through homophobia. That sword needs to cut through those things that come against you and go against others. That, that sword needs to cut through systems that continue to, to oppress the homeless. That sword needs to cut through the systems that continue to perpetuate the pay gap between men and women. That sword needs to be used to cut through all of those targets that come against us. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And finally, always pray in the spirit with all of your prayers and petitions. Pray constantly and attentively for all of God's people. Prayer is vital to this work. Prayer is your your ability to talk to God and to hear from God as well. And as you walk in this world, as you carry this armor of God, to remember that prayer is an essential tool in your tool belt. It is very essential that you communicate with God, with the God of your understanding, and the language that God has given you to walk in this world. So each day, why not start your day off with getting yourself equipped to take action as a child of God? Why not start off by putting on the armor that God has given you that will allow you to fight against principalities and darkness, that will allow you to stand even in the times that it feels like you can't stand anymore, that will allow you to be able to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves, that will allow you to be able to bring the gospel of peace for those who need to hear the gospel of peace. And I guarantee you that as you take action so that you can fight against the principalities and darkness of this world, that you will make a difference not only for yourself, but for others as well. So let God continue to lead you. Let God continue to guide you as you continue to take action, to stand firm in this world, no matter what may come your way, no matter what you may experience, no matter what you may, what you may witness, that God has given you the power, God has given you the peace, God has given you the ability to stand firm, God has given you the ability to stand strong, God has given you the ability to put on the whole armor of God, in the way that God has called you and intended for you to do. 
my family, be blessed, be prayerful, be strong. God loves you unconditionally, and so do I.